Who wants to live forever? Always on the move, you can never retire while keeping your longevity a secret and forget about marriage, or will you? This episode about the price of immortality was written by Charles Beaumont and directed by Anton Leder. As always, the alternative theories mentioned within may cause anxiety, rage, and disbelief. But that's why you're here, I hope. Kindly consider leaving a like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content. Now, let's hear about a man who shares what he thinks about the American Civil War in a university. What could go wrong? Long live Walter Jameson. Meet Walter Jameson. He's a college history professor and a smash hit with the students and faculty alike. He brings history to life, especially Civil War history, almost if he lived it himself. Walter's got his eye on a 30-year-old doctoral student, Susanna. But Susanna's father, Sam Kittridge, got that uneasy feeling about Walter. Walter seems a little too old for his daughter, and he questions his take on history that is not found in any published books. Walter's historic inspiration comes from the diary of one Major Hugh Skelton. But don't bother asking him to borrow it. Walter guards it, as if it was his own diary. Sam wants a more quiet place to discuss the American Civil War and invites Walter over for dinner. In those days, professors lived across the street from each other in modest, well-maintained neighborhoods. The night air brings a hearty appetite, plans for one's future, and very curious old ladies, one who has a certain infatuation with college professors. In the Kit Ridge residence, Sam shows Walter a Civil War-era photograph of Major Hugh Skelton, who looks oddly, strangely, exactly like Walter, down to the ring on his finger. Walter confesses to Sam that he was the Major, and possibly of those of other identities for the past 2,000 years. Walter Jameson explains that an alchemist gave him near immortality, he does not age, but is not immune to harm or injury. While this piques the interest of Sam, an aging man himself, Walter shares he did not know what was done to him and never saw the alchemist again. The many centuries of living and keeping his secret meant a life on the run from one place to the next. Life is precious because it does not last forever. Walter also tells his lack of courage keeps him from using a revolver in his desk drawer on himself. Sam figures Walter out and knows if his daughter Susanna marries Jameson, he'll eventually leave her. Sam Kittridge forbades Walter to marry her, but Walter proposes to Susanna and plans to elope that night, that hour. Rushing back to his house, Walter gathers his thoughts from behind his desk he will regret his poor habits in firearm safety and storage as the same strange old woman makes an unexpected appearance. She is the ghost of Walter's past, Laurette, his abandoned wife. It's been too long, and Walter could not recognize his love at first. Walter shows some regret before feeling awkward and abject fear when Laurette exhibits feelings for him. I can't let you marry her, Tommy. You're mine. But hell hath no fury like a woman scorned or rejected. Seeing an opportunity to change the future and right the sins of the past, Lorette picks up Walter's pistol and delivers till death do us part. Lorette exits the murder scene with little regret or even memory. As old man Kitridge stumbles into Walter's study, he sees Jameson, calm and dying, but calm nevertheless. Walter ages rapidly by the second and seems grateful to catch up on time. Then comes Susanna, and her father pleads with her to keep out. Susanna makes it to Walter's study. The light's off, but she recognizes Walter's clothes on the floor emptied of its body, and asks, what's with the white powder? Kitridge answers, only dust. There will be no wedding. 
ageless characters walking unassumingly through history is not that uncommon in fiction. They usually go by different names from one period of time to another. They may be helpful, somewhat sharing their wisdom, but have a personal agenda that is deemed selfish to mere mortals. The recipe of their longevity may be out of reach or unknown, but they are always guarded about their appearances. In the example of Walter Jameson, was he a hero or villain? Rod Serling's opening narration described the introduction of him as a nightmare. Our long national nightmare is over. Why? Because of his unnatural lifespan? It may be his nightmare because he cannot wake up from our prime material world into the heavenly afterlife. Or as the alternative theory suggests, it is our nightmare because he will not leave history to us. While we shouldn't apply modern sensitivities to a classic television series made 60 plus years ago, doing so makes this theory more convincing. As years turn into decades and centuries, history is certain to be retold, revised, and sometimes rewritten. In a case of poetic irony, Long Live Walter Jameson spotlights U.S. Civil War history during a time when it was common to romanticize it. The living world of the future will not always want to hear from someone from the past. There are modern day historians, filmmakers, and rabble rousers that demand the right to interpret history fitting modern narratives. As long as there is someone alive with first person accounts, the revisionists will have to wait. But no one lives forever, do they? Take note what the episode does not mention. Sam Kittredge is consumed with how Walter explains history, but when he learns of Walter's agelessness, he is only interested in the elixir of life. No time is he curious to learn about what he had seen, the languages he had spoken, or cultures he had lived over the past 2,000 years. But for Sam, he's a father first, a professor second, when protecting his daughter's future. Lorette was not so much out to protect Susanna, but went for one last effort to recover her lawfully recognized marriage to Walter. The episode is very small, as in we see the price of Walter's long life through only Sam and old lady Lorette. So small, the synopsis could be tersely described as serial bigamist bumps into one of his wives. It's not so much about the glories of his past, but the troubles he is responsible for having too much of a future. Like the world, Sam and Lorette weren't interested in Walter's wisdom. They wanted him to go already and return to his only respectable status. Dust. Only dust. I've always been a fan of Twilight Zone episodes that relied on dialogue. What makes this episode so very interesting is that its angle isn't what it would be like to live forever, but what would happen if we met someone as ageless as Walter Jameson. If you read The Twilight Zone Companion by Mark Zickery, you'll learn how the episode's success was credited to the performance of Kevin McCarthy. No, not the politician, but the actor from The Invasion of the Body Snatchers. They're coming! They're coming! Help! Help! My only critique, and it's a minor one, the episode was too short for a character arc. Unless you're looking at Walter, who finally accepted death, which points to my alternative theory that the world wanted him to go away. Sam came close to having an arc, if only the episode was five minutes longer. We have an immortal who wishes death, and an old man who was afraid of it. It's interesting for Walter to have something Sam envies. From one professor to another, Walter lectures that immortality isn't all that's cracked up to be. We suppose Sam will live his final years, continuing to be afraid. Jameson was a tragic character that brought misery, even if it was disguised as bliss, only because he lived too long. One of the tropes I will describe for the episode is comeuppance. Not necessarily because he's a rotten person, but that he couldn't outlive his mortal frailties. I give this episode three dimensions out of five. 
It does have a couple tropes. Tag them, supernatural character, and comeuppance. This is Mr. G of Synergy leaving you with these final words. You may wish yourself a long life, but not too long, especially in the Twilight Zone. Check out other videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.